Hello everyone, this is my presentation for today. Before I begin, here's a gentle reminder to seek my permission if you are interested to save, save or use any of the images shown in this presentation. Thank you. In this presentation, I will address two points. The first is an argument that relates to the observation of Chinese gravesite rituals of ancestor worship, memorialization of the dead, and performance of tomb-keeping duties by the tomb-keepers of Bukit Brown Cemetery. The second is a compare and contrast endeavor where I would place tomb-keepers and friends of the cemetery side by side and observe their differences. Let's begin. Briefly, Bukit Brown Cemetery is a century-old burial site that was open for burial from 1922 and closed for burials in 1972. It is an expensive area that is over 70 hectares and contains some 100,000 tombs at the time of its closure. Due to the lack of regular maintenance by the government, the cemetery has overgrown to such an extent that it is now a secondary forest. This was my field site for my PhD research and from which I had obtained the bulk of my photos for this presentation. Let's talk about tomb keepers now. In general, this term refers to individuals who perform cleaning and maintenance duties for tombs in the cemetery. Some of these individuals may sometimes perform exhumation too, but not all of them would have acquired the set of skills to do so. Tomb keepers may also be referred to as cemetery caretakers or caretakers. These photos show the kinds of tomb, clean, tomb cleaning work done by tomb keepers at Bukit Brown Cemetery. They remove unruly vegetation, mow the grass, repaint the inscriptions, and sweep away the leaf litter. Given the tropical humid climate in Singapore, vegetation grows very quickly. Therefore, tomb keepers need to expend significant effort to clear away unruly vegetation like this tomb, which was overgrown and almost could not be seen. After the tomb, ke tomb keepers cleared away the vegetation, the tomb becomes visible and it's tidy looking. Okay, due to technical difficulties, I can't play a YouTube video here, but uh, this title of the video you can search online, it's called Memory Makers, The Book It Brown Caretakers. I'll just show some screenshots of uh, the sharing from two tomb keepers. Uh, the first is Mr. Chua. He was 84 at the time of the shoot. Um, he's been a cemetery caretaker for 68 years. In the video, he shared um, about the types of services that he provides. Um, first is pruning, meaning the removal and clearing away of uh, vegetation around the tomb, and also exhumation. Um, he treats the tomb keeping task as a job. Uh, but he's not hung up if there are no jobs for the day. He likes to hang out in the cemetery to breathe in the fresh air. The next tomb keeper is Mr. Lim, aged 36. He is a third generation cemetery caretaker. He shared that um, his father and grandfather lived in the same human settlement in Bukit Brown. And um, all of the tomb keepers in Bukit Brown are actually um, former villagers from these human settlements. Um, in his uh, settlement, uh, the name of his settlement is called Tan Hu Long, and he refers to it as the Tan Hu Long community, and only descendants from this community can become tomb keepers. So in terms of expertise, um, there, there are two types. One is um, on-the-job training, or it is self-taught so the case of mr chua he said that he didn't need anyone to teach him how to do tomb keeping it came on quite uh, naturally and um mr lim uh, shared that uh, he learned how to do gold lettering for the inscriptions on headstones from his father so there's a kind of informal apprenticeship here um so all tomb keepers would charge for their services. Uh, so Mr. Lim is seen here sharing that um, uh, he would uh, receive payment from the descendants when they come by to pay respects to their ancestors annually. Um, but Mr. Lim also highlighted that he practices compassion when he, um, he, he charges his clients. If he sees elderly clients, he would likely charge them lesser 
um, because he knows that it's quite difficult for them to come to the cemetery already and he doesn't want to make their lives even more challenging. So from the video, we can glean four points, uh, which is um, membership. So uh, a tomb keeper from Bukit Brown has to be a former villager, and he or she must be a descendant from the Tan Hulong community. In terms of skill set, uh, the tomb keeper can either be self-taught or undergo an, an apprenticeship. Uh, at the end of it, um, the tomb keeper would possess expertise in exhumation and or craftsmanship. Uh, in terms of services provided, uh, there is there are tomb keep cleaning or maintenance, exhumation, and craftsmanship such as gold lettering. And finally, um, the charges levied by a tomb keeper to his client would vary based on the tomb keeper's discretion. So we've just learned about uh, the profile of a tomb keeper in Bukit Brown Cemetery. This is in Singapore. Now we shall look uh, at friends of the cemetery in the UK and we will do a compare and contrast uh, with these two groups subsequently. So friends of the cemetery are volunteer groups that want to preserve historic cemeteries in the UK. So they do this by clearing away unwanted vegetation, nurturing the welcome plants, and keeping the burial site neat and tidy. Um, so there is this uh, association called the National Federation of Cemetery Friends, which was established in 1986, and it started with 12 volunteer groups um, at that time, and it now has about 120 groups. So the rise in membership is due to two reasons. Um, firstly, the availability of funding such as the Heritage Lottery Fund. So individuals um, from these groups can actually apply to this fund as long as they show that um, their objectives tie in well with preserving heritage at the historic cemetery of their choice. Um, then, in terms of policy, um, there have been continued cuts in local authority funding, meaning that um, the government is giving less money to upkeep cemeteries. And so, therefore, they want to encourage um, more volunteers to join in because you don't have to pay the volunteers for their services. So. Um, they try to get people who are able to do the maintenance work for free and also enjoy doing this task. Um, despite the great number of groups now, uh, there, there has been a, uh, an observation that, is that there is great variation in the composition of and the type of work done by each group. Friends of the Cemetery and Tomb Keepers with, from Bukit Brown, we would likely get this type of table. So I've looked at five aspects of differences between the two. Uh, on the leftmost column, we have motivation. So Friends of the Cemetery are self-initiated and policy-driven, whereas Tomb Keepers from Bukit Brown uh, engage in contractual or paid labour. Um, so pr friends of the cemetery have no personal relationship with the cemetery. Uh, however, tomb keepers may have ancestors buried in Bukit Brown since they were former villagers. And in fact, uh, from two of my interviews with two tomb keepers, um, they have shared with me that they have ancestors buried in, tomb in Bukit Brown. And I've actually been brought uh, to see the graves of their ancestors. In terms of membership, so as mentioned, Friends of the Cemetery has increasing membership, but in contrast, uh, Tomb Keepers have decreasing membership. Uh, since they are a closed community and um, most of the male Tomb Keepers are single, um, there, there isn't many um, family, there, there aren't many family members to go around to in terms of successes. And for those who are married, their adult children are not keen to take on the role um, because they find it a very physically demanding work. In terms of role, um, the friends of the cemetery 
um, display altruistic care for the cemetery because they want to preserve the cemetery. But tomb keepers from Bukit Brown um, have a pragmatic role. They, they just want to survive. They want to earn an income. Um, the main reason is because um, most of them are lowly educated and they live within a cemetery. So the only way they can um, survive was try to make a living out of the cemetery. Uh, in terms of function, um, Friends of the Cemetery offer free guided walks to visitors in the cemetery, but the tomb keepers are focused primarily on cleaning and maintaining tombs. We move on to examining gravesite rituals. So these refer to the ritualistic practices that are observed at the tomb. I've split this into two parts. Gravesite rituals observed by the tomb keepers, the self, and those that are transmitted as knowledge to others. Uh, so typically it's from the tomb keeper to the descendants who had come by to visit their deceased forebears. So the leftmost photo depicts the tomb keeper's pre Qingming festival prayer, which is a simple affair with a small bag of assorted types of paper offerings to be burnt. So Qingming festival refers to the annual tomb sweeping occasion observed by the Chinese where descendants are expected to go and visit their ancestors and clean their graves. So after Qingming festival, large-scale prayer sessions will be held by different groups of tomb keepers. The photo in the center shows the scale of the paper offerings that were made. It's a six-tier formation uh, with paper money and paper shoes thrown into the middle. So the whole formation would be set on fire and burnt. The rightmost photo shows two tomb keepers setting up a makeshift altar where fruits, food and paper offerings are made to the deities. These photos showcase the variety of paper offerings made by tomb keepers. Uh, but who are the tomb keepers praying to? In a gist, tomb keepers believe that netherworld spirits exist and they need to be appeased lest they cause harm to their tomb keeping work. Deities like the earth deity also need to be prayed to because they protect the cemetery and the people within. For example, the earth deity protects the earth or the soil, so he needs to be appeased because when tomb keeping work is performed, tomb keepers may need to dig into the soil. There's also a mountain god that needs to be prayed to because he's believed to ensure the safety of all who come to the cemetery. So these photos suggest that Tomb keepers acknowledge the existence of different types of netherworld spirits, ranging from the child spirits, therefore children footwear, male spirits, hence the tobacco, and the female spirits, hence the makeup. Tomb keepers also guide descendants on how to perform gravesite rituals when the latter comes by to visit their ancestors during Qingming festival. So one descendant called Eugene had come to visit his ancestor with nothing but paper offerings but he had brought a piece of Chinese creep snack for the tomb keeper who helped to clean his ancestor's tomb. Seeing that he had not brought food for his ancestors, the tomb keeper advised him to offer the creep to his ancestors instead so as to make the ancestor worship process complete. So you can see this piece of small beige thing on a paper plate that's being offered in the first photo. So it contains the creep. Um, in the third photo, a descendant of Chinese Indian descent had come by to pay respects to her newly discovered ancestor, newly discovered because previously she wasn't aware that she had ancestors in Bukit Brown. The tomb keeper wearing yellow boots was heard, assuring her that offering flowers was fine and that her ancestor would be happy to see her for the first time. He was seen showing her how to position the chrysanthemums and how to read the Chinese inscriptions on the headstone. The middle photo shows the proper way to lay out the offerings at the ancestor's tomb, a way that not every descendant would be cognizant of. Therefore, tomb keepers often guide the descendants on this and also offer explanations as to why the items have to be positioned as such for ancestor worship. I've also included some photos taken of the tomb keepers' gravesite rituals conducted during the seven lunar month or the Hungry Ghosts Festival. You can see here that the offerings were made on an altar top. Uh, this is for the deities that guard the cemetery. And also, there are offerings on a foldable table laid out in the open. This is for the netherworld spirits. The tomb keepers had hired a Taoist priest, uh, which is the man seen in the center picture wearing an orange robe. 
、uh, the priest came to recite prayers for the netherworld spirits.、Um, this is to sort of assuage their grievances and to appease them and sort of persuade them to reincarnate. So at the end of the ritual, the paper offerings were burnt as a huge pile, and other paper rings were thrown around as gifts to the netherworld spirits. In conclusion, we can see that there are significant differences between friends of the cemetery versus tomb keepers from Bukit Brown, based on five factors: motivation, relationship to the cemetery, membership, role, and function. There is a distinct belief system in each group. The belief in the preservation of the of the cemetery by the friends of the cemetery versus the belief in survival by the tomb keepers. In terms of grave site rituals in Bukit Brown, two points、uh, have been demonstrated. Firstly, the belief in the coexistence of netherworld spirits and deities that govern the underworld and protect the cemetery leads to the observation of grave site rituals amongst the tomb keepers. Secondly. The belief that the ancestors need to be cared for and revered leads to the tomb keepers、um, taking their own initiative to teaching descendants on how to observe and pre- perform gravesite rituals properly. So, with this, I end my presentation. Thank you very much.